Hey folks, welcome back to the lab. So here we are, we're back all set up again. I did find my little transformer and I found my big diode, so they're in place now. And what I've done over here is I had these uh, TIP3055 transistors here. You see they're in a TO247 package. And what I did, I had uh, little uh, silicone insulators on them. The actual thermal resistance between this package and the heat sink was quite high. And the heat sink has a fairly decent uh, thermal resistance itself. And the fan wasn't properly aligned. So I've done a number of things. I, I, I put these transistors in and you can see that they have about twice the contact area. That's really good because they, they actually have half the thermal resistance. So going from 1.4 thermal resistance to 0.7 here, I took out the wafers altogether. So we have just a little bit of thermal grease, very small amount between the, the transistor and the heat sink. So that reduces that thermal resistance there by about two. And I've, uh, I've aligned the fan properly and I've got a fan that's a little bit beefier here. So this fan puts a little bit more air through and I've lined it properly and held it in place with these uh, copper wires here. So this should help us avoid blowing up one of these transistors. I think we left it off where we were going to set the, the maximum current. That's what failed, but we had not set the maximum voltage first. I think that's an important thing to do is to set the maximum voltage first. And you can put it up to that maximum voltage and while you're setting the maximum current then you're you're reducing the dissipation across the transistors as much as possible so that's how we're going to proceed and we may have to have a couple of kicks at the can here uh, in order to reduce ripple so i'm going to set the maximum voltage initially to 25 and we'll see how that goes so let's turn her on here all right and let's bring up the voltage So I think that's around about where we're at, right? 19 point something. Now I just got to get a little screwdriver to tweak it. And this here is the voltage adjust. So let's uh, turn that. Okay, that's close enough. So we should have a scope up here somewhere. I'll leave that up there. And it looks like we've got uh, got about 10 millivolts peak to peak and I think that's just picking up environmental noise look at that I don't see any ripple there right now so now is the time to uh, you know get in there and start raising up the current I want to get this up to 5 amps um, so let's do that we don't want to spend too long there <laughs> because uh, a number of things like I don't have uh, a heat sink on this rectifier here it's a big sturdy rectifier so it shouldn't blow up and I, I don't want to blow up my transistors again. Transformer's okay, it's good up to 6 amps. Everything else on here should be fine. There shouldn't be any issue. And so let's, uh, let's start bringing that current up. So we'll go and we'll set the load for more current. Okay, here we're at 4 amps. And let's look at our noise. Our noise has gone up now. I see a little bit of ripple in there on top of the background noise. So we've got peak to peak, it's around about 16 millivolts. I can live with that. I'm gonna set the, the load here for 5.1 amps. And so far we don't have any smoke coming out now. Let's see, is that where, oh, okay, look at that. We're already set at maximum here. That's good, okay. So if I turn this down just a little bit, it starts to limit. And look at the scope there. It, it, it limits very nicely. There's no oscillation or anything like that going on. That's pretty good. We've got the oscilloscope set up here to uh, trigger once it passes about 5 volts and then we should see what the, the turn on curve looks like. So I'm ready to turn it on now. Okay, there you go. See, it's not quite as pretty as it was. It's not bad. You know, there is a little tiny little bit of overshoot there. It looks like it might be about a volt. You might want to improve upon that if you want to use the supply in that way where you attach a device and a test to it and then power it up like that. That curve is a little bit wiggly there. Just a little post-production comment here. So the unregulated supply is coming up before the regulation starts. So what we're seeing here is the resulting ripple. Putting in a switch in here, and this would be a switch that has to be uh, like normally off. So if you switch off the supply, that switch goes off. And then when you turn on the supply, it doesn't come on until you push the button to make it come on. And what that would do then is it would make sure that everything here is stabilized and then it just enabled the voltage error amplifier here to, to turn on the output. 
And another thing you have to do with these transistors, you have to match them. Now the two M3055s I put in there, I matched the gain on them. I had them so that the gain was within one or two of each other. And unfortunately I can't do that with these, I don't have enough of them. I just bought enough to get me through this. So I wasn't able to match the gain on them. The gain is quite different between the two of them. And it's about off by about 10 or so. And I can show you what that does. And you can see this one's got 1.8, let's call it 1.9 amps going through it. And then this one over here, they got 1.3 amps going through it. So there's a 0.6 amp difference between the two of them. And the way you get rid of that is by matching the gain of the transistors. This test here is going to be for turn off to see what it looks like if you turn it off. Again, this is not an ideal arrangement, but uh, we'll have a look at it and see what it looks like. So we've got 25 volts to it. We've got three amps coming out of it. I got the scope here set up and the trigger is armed, so let's turn the power off. Beautiful. That's a straight linear drop. Takes a little while, but uh, there's, no, there's no sharp spikes or anything like that. Doesn't look like it would uh, harm anything. Okay, very good. All right, we're set up here to do a load regulation test. Now, according to the scope here, the trace is exactly 25.50 volts. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to bring it down to the next notch down, that's 25.42, so it's 0 0.08 volts below the actual voltage. And we've got 25 volts coming out here, we're going into a 17 ohm load, we've got about an amp and a half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the load and I'm going to change the resistance to 7 ohms and switch that in immediately. So even if it drops 0 0.08 volts, we'll know about it. So I'm going to arm the trigger right now, changing it now. Okay, you see we did go up two amps, but uh, there was no deflection at all in the voltage. All right, let's, let's see if it works the other way around, see what it looks like going up. We should bring the voltage down a little bit for this test, just so we have some room to go up. So we'll bring the voltage down to 24 volts. That's close enough. So that's 24.08 on the scope, so we're going to bring up the trigger to 24.17 and we're, what we'll do is we'll drop this current down about an amp and a half again by changing that uh, resistance back up to 17 ohms so arm the trigger changing the resistance now all right yeah okay that that didn't trigger the trigger at all so it's extremely stable as far as the load is concerned so the load can do whatever it wants it's going to not affect the voltage coming out of it that's an excellent result so, well, I think right now I've demonstrated the design of this regulator here. So using that PNP transistor here, that frees us up to have an operational amplifier that can work at a much lower voltage. So we can basically go to any voltage we want on here, as long as we keep the transistors happy. So, I mean, you could have a 100 volt, one amp power supply easily doing this method, and you'd never have to buy anything other than a cheap TL081 as I have here. My main design goal is to get this regulator working, and it seems to work very well. All right, folks, I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I thought it was very informative for myself. See you in the next video, which is probably going to pick up on the little SMD testers again. Finish that off. Bye-bye.